Hmm. Uh-huh. Man. I like all these games, and I want to play all of them, but I only have time for one. If only there was a way I could play a combination of all three on a console with subpar shoulder buttons. I wish there was a way I could- Okay, this has gone on for way too long. Infamous it is! It's a PlayStation 3 exclusive, so I'm pretty much forced to play it on this console, but I don't hate the PlayStation 3. It hates me. Probably because I throw its games around. So why am I comparing those three games to this guy with a Messiah complex? It's rather simple. Infamous is like Star Wars The Force Unleashed because you can force push and shock people with your hand. Search your feelings, you know it be true. It's a sandbox game because you free roam around a city killing whoever you want. And it's like Fallout 3 because you're strolling around a wasteland taking missions from people. And they all have giant exclamation points above their heads. Well, now that we see that it's like World of Warcraft, let me go through my checklist to show why it's not World of Warcraft. Does Infamous have an ending? Yes. Alright, it's always good to have one of those. Do the missions have more meaning than just mindless grinding? Yeah, I mean, you're clearing the city of bad guys. That sounds pretty useful. And did I lose any friends while playing this game? No, in fact. But that's only true because of the old axiom, zero equals zero. I was told that Infamous was about a guy named Cole McGrath, not to be confused with the Coltrane Train, baby. Nobody plays this game like me! Who is a delivery guy that was carrying a bomb when it blew up. And I was really looking forward to a tutorial mission where I drove around in my FedEx truck and I got to deal with angry customers. But the game starts out slightly different. Great, no angry customers. And really, I'm not all too thrilled with these graphics. Remember that sentence, I'm gonna contradict it later on. You wake up in a crater completely bewildered and you try to stumble to safety, which is harder than it looks because you're still packing morning wood. You soon learn that you can control and in fact are healed by electricity. And thus the hilarity ensues as you set off on your adventure to try and find the guy who set off the bomb that killed so many people, but gave you your powers. Cole kind of sounds like an ingrate if you ask me. The first person to give you work is named Moya. Moya, really? <laughs> is she gonna put my lunch in a brown bag and then ask me if I have clean underwear too? This FBI agent is always telling you to cross town, which can get kinda tedious. You see, this isn't a game where you can steal cars. Sucker Punch even threw in an audio bit that explained that if he sat in a car, it would blow up. So most of the time, you'd be huffing your way up buildings and parkouring across power lines. But on one occasion when I got a mouthful of bricks, I realized that the side of the wall looked really good. In fact, all the textures in this game look really good. That's my contradicting statement. Those cheeky bastards sold me on Blu-ray! That's when I started to warm up to Infamous. It's one of those games that makes me really not want to go to work, and last time I felt that way was Burnout Paradise, but that was probably for fear of actually driving. As you fight these baddies that appeared after the blast, you will gain more powers, and you will use all these powers to absolutely wreck shop. And shops will have to be wrecked when they fill the screen with enemies. Yeah, I know the PS3 has like a billion processors, but there's no need to prove it. The only thing that's more satisfying than taking down a bus with your bare hands is taking down a tanker with your bare hands. Infamous is also really good at keeping morale up because you have visual progression. I would say that it falls into the category of restoration, but even when you do clear an area of bad guys, the city still looks like crap. I've heard people say that this game is way too repetitive, to which I have to say... Actually, yeah, it's really repetitive. Then why is it so much fun? Hold on, I gotta check something. Nope, no cocaine. I found that the structure of Infamous is recycled, but at the same time, kind of refreshing. The three island setup is certainly nothing new, but the thing is, they're each controlled by one person, and they all hate each other. So when you kill one of them, it's kind of like doing yourself and your enemies a favor at the same time. They also each have their own minions. Sasha has the Reapers, who look like oversized Jawas. Alden has the Trashmen, who look like Count Grievous' guards. And Kessler has those guys in gas masks, who look like... Uh, hold on, uh... The Droid 99. For the longest time, the only thing I thought of these bosses was that they had really good voiceovers and their interactions were somewhat interesting, but I had no idea what was going on in the story. That is, until the end cutscene, which was so epic, I went blind from awesomeness. If you're the pretentious type, you might think it's stupid, but seriously, I did not see that one coming. Afterward, I decided to pick up Prototype. Actually, no, I didn't. It seems like the trendy thing to do is to compare these games because they were released around the same time. So I decided that the only way to be an individual is to stay far, far away from Prototype. And besides, I wasn't done with Infamous. When playing this game, you have to ask yourself... 
because you get the choice to be bueno o mal. This is the first game that I was actually able to play all the way through with this kind of choice, much less play through twice. And I certainly hope it's not a representation of the rest of them. Playing through Infamous twice is nothing short of an incredible waste of time. Aside from a few lines of dialogue, some side missions, and some powers that I never used anyway, NOTHING CHANGES! It's an incredible balancing act that had to be played. It's hard enough to believe that when I was bad, I was still doing this for the good of the city, but even when I was playing good, Cole's girlfriend still had to hate him. But worst of all, with some of these choices, no matter what I decided, the outcome would be the same. I tried so hard and I got so far, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. I had to- Never mind. So when I beat the game a second time, I audibly asked myself, why did I just do that? Of course, if there wasn't a bad side, we'd only have about half as many trophies. And it is kind of funny seeing the difference in Cole. Good Cole is a downright respectable man that I would actually allow my daughter to date. Bad Cole looks like Anakin Skywalker post high ground ponage. And no matter what, he sounds like the Dark Knight. Wait, wrong franchise. Uh, he sounds like a cross between Saboba and Bib. Now oh, this Star Wars comparison thing was a bad idea anyway. Getting back to trophies, that was another part of the game that I was suckered into doing. If you like collecting things, which seems to be the motivation behind that Prince of Persia, you can go around Empire City locating satellites and the shards that constitute your life. More power to you if you want all the trophies, but you have to press the L3 button to get a location. And I only got about half the shards before my thumb fell off from exhaustion. And then there's some kooky trophies, like drain 750 megawatts from Empire City. Well, good job on not defining what a megawatt was, or telling me how many megawatts are in a lamp, or even giving us a bar to see how many megawatts we have drained, like the ones in Gears of War 2 and Left 4 Dead. Sheesh, and I just got done praising this game for visual progression. Without any feedback, this is what I would call blind grinding. But I did get that achievement. All I had to do was jump on a transformer, put a rubber band on the L2 button, and then go to the Atlantis Casino slash Arcade. The most enticing of the trophies was beating the game on hard, and this might come as a shock to you guys, but I actually got that one. See, I'm not as inept to video games as some of you may think. But this is all leading up to a very odd conclusion. A year ago, if somebody tried to talk to me about achievements, I would have swiftly left the conversation. Now, I feel like I'm a failure if I don't get half of them for each game. Even more weird is Infamous is a popular video game that I like and I'm really good at. A combination that is rarely seen. And since I have no real conclusion to this, let's just jump to something that's only slightly related to what we were just talking about.